All right, so welcome back to RT2. So the last time I left off with you guys, uh, I was talking about Bootchamp and installing Windows on my 5.1 Mac Pro, which is running Mojave now. So update, Bootchamp doesn't do that. I found that out. You can't install it through Bootchamp and then use it like that. It uses the Bootcamp volume. Since you can't access Bootcamp on Mojave in a Mac Pro 5.1, can't do that. So uh, I have actually haven't seen any videos of this being done on YouTube, but today I'm gonna show you guys kind of the half process of how to do uh, and to install Windows 10 on a separate hard drive on your Mac Pro 5, come on one that's running Mojave, or if you're running DOS Dudes Catalina Patcher, I'm gonna assume this works there as well. Um, so this is gonna be kind of cool. So I had to go through a lot of forums and stuff like that to get that. So right now we're on the Mac Rumors forum for how to burn the disc properly. So pretty much we're using a DVD to do this. I actually had to go to Target and pick up some DVD-Rs. So I'm using the 1909 build of Windows 10, the most recent release of it. So to pick up a eight and a half gigabytes uh, dual layer disk because they don't I, they don't seem to make anything bigger than 4.7 gigs on a DVD-R single layer. So I've currently got that in the drive of my Mac Pro, which is burning the uh, image right now to the DVD right now. Uh, and then from there, we're going to move forward with the install. Uh, I'm waiting on a couple things to get here. I've got a four terabyte Western Digital black hard drive coming in, which I was originally planning on partitioning evenly uh, with Bootcamp for Mac OS two terabytes and Windows two terabytes. But since I'm going to have that drive and since I can't use uh, Bootcamp like that, I'm going to leave the one terabyte in here. Uh, my only other option was to go and download High Sierra, which I might wind up doing if this doesn't work. Uh, going back to High Sierra and downgrading fresh install the whole nine yards and installing it that way. But uh, I'm going to try first to not do that. Um, and we're going to be able to uh, <clears throat> install Windows this way. So uh, I'll try to remember to link the forum post in the description below if I could get by my dog here who has decided to, she wanted to lay in the floor. So yeah, I'm going to go back. I want to try to go back. This is there we go. So this is done through H nine eight two six seven nine zero here on Mac forums or forums Mac rumors, and he did a whole step by step guide on how to do this. So hopefully this works for me. Uh, I was reading that the uh, eighteen hundred series, as I like to call it, like eighteen oh three, eighteen oh nine, whatever builds of Windows have had some issues with doing this. So this might not be easy, but we're gonna try our best. Uh, I'm completely unexperienced with this kind of stuff, so. Uh, this is going to be interesting. I also talked to a user on Reddit. Uh, I posted about this on the subreddit, um, the Mac Pro subreddit, and the guy was telling me that I shouldn't go back to High Sierra due to risk of a possible loss of both partitions through boot camp. It seems to be kind of buggy uh, in High Sierra and stuff like that. So he said just that he recommended I go this route anyway because I was talking, I was like trying to figure out the pros and cons. So uh, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to go pick up my brother and sister in a second from school. But while I'm doing that, I'm going to let this burn uh, the image onto this disc. Uh, when I come back, I'll get everything moved out. Hopefully, I'll have all my stuff in here, uh, my monitor and my hard drive and the SSD for this guy. And uh, we can go ahead and attempt to install Windows on the 4 terabyte Western Digital Black on the Mac Pro. So, come to you guys later. So what I did is I took out the Mac OS hard drive when I went to install Windows here. So we're using a DVD. I don't know if I clarified this earlier, but the reason you need to use a DVD for this is because Windows 10 will automatically default to legacy BIOS mode when you're doing the DVD install, which is what you need, because apparently the UFI ones were putting bad certificates and corrupting the entire firmware of the Mac Pro. So make sure you have that DVD. That's a must have for doing this. But I recommend taking the Mac OS drive out when you're doing this. That way you don't accidentally write over the Mac OS. Uh, hard disk and that's kind of that so far all right guys so you saw in the time lapse we got Windows installer working uh, now I cut it off at a certain point just so I can enter in private info and stuff of that nature uh, even though I was watching it back you guys can't even see the UI in there because of the uh, lighting and stuff that was going on in there but Windows is, is finishing up right now it's literally booting up completely fine and is a hundred percent operational so now what we're gonna have to do is install an application called Brigadier which is going to give us the bootcamp package for the 5,1, as well as we're also going to install the drivers for the 5,1 and the 1,1 iMac Pro. That way we're able to actually switch between the two OSs. Uh, 
how pretty much we're doing boot camp without the actual boot camp assistant app. Uh, so this is really cool. And uh, I can now confirm that 1909, the, the most recent version of Windows at the time of I'm filming this, is completely compatible with this setup. So this is gonna be interesting to say the least. Uh, once this is finished up, I'll be able to actually set up a new office so you guys can see it's a little bit of a mess in here. But what we're gonna do now is the forum recommends you grab a USB drive that is formatted in FAT32. Now, on my VMP drive that I have, uh, which is sitting over here, I believe is formatted in FAT32. Uh, because I know it's either FAT32 or XFAT because this drive is completely usable between both Mac and Windows. So, but just in case, because that has a lot of crazy files and stuff on it that I need, um, I do happen to have another drive. I have plenty of flash drives, to be honest with you guys. <clears throat> that should be hiding in here. But if not, I'll have to go on down, just clear this up. I do not appear to have it sitting in here though, so that's kind of a frustrating thing. But I do have two USB drives. Uh, gotta find the other one. But if not, I'll throw the VMP drive in, we'll be good. There it is, this one. So I've had this one since middle school, and it's a Volkswagen. The lights used to flash as the little uh, indicator lights, but they don't work anymore. It is USB 3, so we're gonna be able to use this. Um, with Windows 10 and all that stuff. So um, I'll transfer any files that are on off of it and then I'll reformat it in FAT32 if it isn't already formatted that way. And then I will be able to use this to install Brigadier on here. They say it's just easier to do this. Um, like I said, I'll link the form in the, in the description for you guys to go and do this yourselves. But uh, pretty much we're gonna be using this to install Brigadier, which will be, then give us our driver packages and stuff for the 5,1 and 1,1. So let's get into it. I'll put the phone back on the time lapse uh, and at least try to get the focus right this time. So at this point, we started using Brigadier to start installing all of the drivers. Unfortunately, Mac Pro 5.1 drivers were not functional in this build uh, of Brigadier because it was trying to install the Windows 7 stuff, so I was unable to get that functioning. So I wound up using the iMac Pro's drivers completely, uh, as well as the apps and all that stuff, be able to switch between Windows and Mac OS. Everything seemed to work perfectly fine in that regard. Uh, everything works, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, all of that kind of stuff. And all in all, the experience wasn't too bad. I mean, you do need Win or 7-Zip to work this, so that's one thing to keep in mind. All right, guys. So, like I said, this video wasn't going to be a super in-depth install process or anything. But I wanted to update you guys because it's been quite a few hours. It's currently uh, about 9 minutes past 12, and we're at the Windows desktop. I'm doing everything to get all of my games set up on here. Um, I've got GTA 5 doing his thing. Uh, I have the Social Club disc version, but for whatever reason, I decided it needed more data to install, so it's still <laughs> downloading some more stuff um, to it, to the new Rockstar installer. But anyway, it's time I talk about uh, everything. So, um, as you guys saw in the time lapse, maybe if the, <laughs> if the focus was figured out, um, I was having some issues installing the Bootcamp 5 drivers, which is what is meant for the, the Mac Pro 5.1. And I wound up instead just installing the iMac Pro drivers and its apps related stuff and called it a day. Um, unfortunately, that does mean things like the internal speaker doesn't work. And if uh, you've upgraded the airport card in it, uh, there's a really good chance that your Wi-Fi doesn't work. Now, fortunately for me, my Wi-Fi was automatically detected as soon as I booted in. So in all reality, I could have just set up in here and done everything in here from the start. Um, but I didn't. Um, I wound up doing it out there just in case because I don't have any sort of Ethernet cable that runs into this room. Um, it fully works back and forth between Mac OS and Windows, which is great. Um, so that's how you do it without a boot camp assistant. Uh, now, obviously, there are a couple of drawbacks. Now, unless you had a product key to, to input when you first installed Windows, um, you probably are seeing the watermark. For example, I see it here. Uh, I used the little workaround of setting a des uh, setting as desktop background. Unfortunately, the quality is garbage, so I don't know if that's related to the activation issue. Um, but the issue is, for me at least, uh, I have a very high, really, really bad moral tolerance. Now, a lot of people will be saying, oh, you could just use the app and activate it for free, or you could use, or you could go on G2A. I actually did try going on G2A, actually. Um, but the last time I used G2A, my bank went berserk and flagged it and completely froze my card. So I was trying to avoid that. So I went to, I went through privacy. It also it declined on privacy as well. So I'm probably just going to save up a little bit and just bite the bullet 
and buy straight from Microsoft. And a lot of people are going to think I'm stupid and that I shouldn't be doing that, but I feel like that's just the best way to do it. It's the most it's the most legal way possible. Um, it's to just get it through Microsoft and, and bite the bullet on that one. Um, so I'm just going to wait and just wait it out. Fortunately, unlike older versions of Windows, um, Windows 10 only has like a couple of restrictions with activation, uh, which is just personalization. I mean, we're literally the watermark is the worst of it. You still get your updates and security patches and stuff like that. So it's not like I'm going to be an extreme risk of getting viruses. And plus the main advantages of how I'm using Windows is I'm strictly using it for gaming. Now, unfortunately, I had to buy the dust. I had to buy the bullet on my four terabyte drive for Windows, um, which has been partitioned evenly for some reason through Windows. It partitioned it into two terabyte, two terabyte setups. So it's not the worst thing because I actually don't need four terabytes or even two terabytes for gaming on just a strict gaming on this. I'm not editing. I'm not doing anything. That's why I wanted to make sure I could still dual boot. Uh, because if I was using it strictly for gaming only, I wouldn't have this. <laughs> I mean, I'd probably have a completely different computer. Um, but I decided to just go down the route of dual booting this because it's a pretty potent system. Uh, I've done a, a little bit of gaming on it. The 580 is just dominating. Uh, I played a little bit of Spelunky earlier. So that was like the first game purchase I've had since I installed this. Um, I've installed a couple of my games. I got to transfer some mods over from my laptop, my ROG laptop to this to have all of my mods for Demon G available so I can play with that. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much the worst of it. It was a very long process. Uh, booting from a DVD is, is very slow and convoluted and it's just a pain in the balls to deal with. Um, but it, it went perfect. So I can verify now that the 1909 installer works 100%. Um, there's no issues or anything that I found minus HDMI sound, which may be something related to the RX 580, but I just happen to have a Logitech sound system that I've hooked up to my computer, uh, for the time being. Um, anyway, I'm probably going to wind up using this more anyway, because I've heard the internal speakers on these Dell monitors are not great. Uh, this is the S27 something something DGF. So this actually does support FreeSync, which is really cool too, because I do have, happen to have an RX 580 that has FreeSync. So... Uh, I can activate that and use that here. Um, but yeah, so like I said, this wasn't a great uh, installation process, but it is the first one I've seen on YouTube so far and how to do this. Um, it sounds kind of hacky, but it works out in the end and it pretty much just turns it into a normal boot camp anyway. Uh, it's just instead of using uh, partitioning your singular drive, you're using a second hard drive. So uh, my only advice for this is to just take your time, do your research, read the forum post, uh, make sure you're doing everything strictly. And uh, you really don't need the Mac Pro 5.1 drivers for this. You could get away with using just the iMac Pro drivers because a lot of it, for whatever reason, seems to be completely interchangeable in terms of like Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, etc. Um, because I noticed that after I got the drivers for um, the iMac is when I finally could notice stuff. Minus the Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi was immediately supported, but... Um, anyway, I'm gonna wrap things up here. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I'm getting ready to go to bed. It's, like I said, it's way past midnight for me. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and, you know, once this finishes up installing GTA, I'm gonna do a Windows update and hopefully it's not too late then. Uh, and then I'll reset it and put it back in Mac OS. So when I get in here tomorrow, I can work on videos and stuff like that. And, uh, yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys next time. Have a good one, everyone.